of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Monday morning, 9.06 a.m. As we kick off the trading week, markets bouncing in dramatic fashion. Right now, you get the S&Ps up 30 points. That's almost 7 tenths percent. You see the acceleration. We bounced last night at 44.46, almost right where we were at the close of Friday's action. We dipped slightly below that level. And then, man, if you look where we are, you're talking about 34 points, almost from where we were the lows last night in the S&P, climbing higher. NASDAQ 100 catching a bounce. It was quite an acceleration to lower prices on Friday. We dip below 15,540. We almost get to 15,400 overnight. We're about 130 points off of the lows last night. Dow 225 points higher in the Russell, 17 points higher this morning. Crude catching a bid. Quite the acceleration. We talked about it on the update this morning. Take a look at crude. You put it on a daily. We're talking about highs of 76.98 and OPEC. Why not? We'll kick it off with a crude story. OPEC sees stronger demand for its crude this year and next. Uh, stronger demand for the crude on a combination of rising global fuel consumption and output disruptions elsewhere. Latest data, data from the group indicate that the world will continue to face an oil supply deficit in the coming months, even as its members revive idle production. Uh, nonetheless, crude continuing to catch a bit, bumping up near those recent highs of 76.98 recently. Gold pulling back a few dollars, 1788. You look at gold on a daily. And zooming in on the action. Let me take this off real quick. Gold, the pullback September 7th. When was that out of reference? Last Tuesday. Yes, to kick off the week, we trade from a price point of 1833 down to 1796 for the close. Now you take a look at gold for some reference. I was looking at this earlier, just for a Fibonacci in terms of if, if is this our pullback? You're talking about a price level about 1776 would be the 382 of this pop that we've had higher from that low we had on August 9th. And notes and bonds, pretty tame action to kick things off. We get some CPI data out tomorrow morning. Right now you get the 10-year up two ticks. That's correlating to a yield. We're talking about a yield right now, 1.33% on the 10-year. Let's jump over to the VIX. Volatility index this morning, quite a spike on Friday, 2113. Even with the markets, just you know, skyrocket high. I mean, look where we are on the S&P. We're dealing with a VIX at 19 right now. And we're talking about an S&P within 70 points of all-time highs. Still a little volatility, but Friday's action. I mean, look at the S&P, the way it rolled over last week. Five consecutive days. Today, you're catching a bounce. NASDAQ had been stronger, but you got a little bit of a rollover there, especially Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Red bars from where you were, Friday's acceleration, you see we're up to a price level in the NASDAQ 100 of 15,660. We closed out at, fifth, excuse me, 15,660, closed out at 15,425. Was that 235 points from high to low in the NASDAQ 100? Now we're bouncing this morning, putting this back on. Let's put it on a 30 minute. And, you know, it's going to be an interesting open only because look at the action we had in terms of Wednesday. You trade higher, you rip lower on the open. Thursday, you trade higher, you rip lower on the open. And Friday, you didn't even wait until the open at about, yeah, I guess 9.30. You climb higher again and trade higher. For the fourth consecutive day, you have overnight action to the upside. Uh, and we got about 20 minutes to go until the opening bell this morning. All the markets, though, uh, in the green. But as you see, you know, we're talking about a series of lower lows, lower highs. The Dow was really lower yesterday. Take a look at the S&P. We're talking about the same thing. All right. And then the Nasdaq had been so strong early in the week, but even the Nasdaq, nowhere near where we were. I mean, look at where we are. We're just at back to the lows that we had intraday when things looked a little dicey at noon Eastern time. You had quite the sell off towards the end of the day. All right. Let's jump around to what else we have going on and taking a look at some of the stories that we have up here. Where am I going to kick things off at? Excuse me one second while I pull it up. Here we go. Okay, Virgin Galactic back in it. So they're delaying its first commercial research space mission after a third-party supplier warned of a potential 
defect in a component. I mean, this stock very volatile. We all know the the run that it's had from high to low here. 24.49, no real reaction on that. I just want to emphasize, though, the type of volatility we're dealing with here. Twice people got caught at these highs. Remarkable. Early in the year at 62.80, you accelerate higher into when they actually go into space and you sell off yet again. You're trading at 25.16. Uh, they have a long time until they're making any money and they're raising money from any time this stock price goes is up here, which you got to keep in mind. If you're a buyer, I mean, they're shown that they're going to be taking money off the table, anything that that goes higher. I think Dell got an upgrade today, added the computer maker stock to its conviction buy list. Goldman Sachs, Dell, got Denny, plenty of Dells in my time. Uh, quite the acceleration as home computing, computers overall. And this morning, you're going to open a little bit higher to about 97.09 on that upgrade. Viacom, planning to revamp its Paramount Pictures unit, according to people familiar with the matter. The revamp, which would separate the TV and film operations, could be announced as soon as today. Now, what's interesting here is that they have Paramount, they have Paramount Plus. I'm always interested in the streaming sector, and that's pulled back about 30 cents. And it's interesting how, you know, the consolidation here. We had the um, Huang blow up in terms of the acceleration of 101.97, the liquidation there. We chop around at about $40 since we hit that price level on March 26th. Uh, crazy that you get six months of action over there. During that time, too, you had the Discovery and HBO merger that happened, uh, one of the other big streaming brands. But it looks like they're going to try and uh, separate TV and film. Nonetheless, Paramount Plus, it's a tough, tough order to compete with the streamers out there. In terms of, you know, the run that Netflix has had. Netflix, I believe they just got Friends, right? Or, uh, or is it Seinfeld's? They're going to get Seinfeld, I think it was. And uh, that looking to drive some action with some of their other content. You make it up to 16, excuse me, 615 last week. You close at 598. We're a little bit higher with the market today. There's your action on Netflix. That was an all-time high. Disney's had quite a run as well. Last week, you're up to 184.12. You'd pull back to a 382 of the run it had from November on Disney. Zooming in on the action, 184.12 Disney. Particularly volatile with the market. You're up almost $2 right now in the pre-market with tech stocks and the market overall trading higher. Uh, and we talked about Netflix as well. Disney will show the remainder of its 2021 movie releases exclusively in theaters rather than making them simultaneously available on Disney Plus streaming service. Disney's Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings topped the weekend box office once again following its record Labor Day weekend performance with the movie showing exclusively in theaters. So Disney feeling pretty comfortable to push things back to the movie theater business. Now, they've grown Disney Plus tremendously. It'll be interesting to see how they do merge these two aspirations in terms of making money at the box office while growing the Disney Plus brand. One of the things that's particularly interesting is that you look back to 2019 before COVID. I believe they had 10 different films that grossed a billion dollars at the box office. That's a business they want to get back into. Uh, and that's part of the reason why. I was such a bull on Disney AM because those brands are still going to exist. I mean, the Marvel movies, right? Shang-Chi for particular uh, just beat a Labor Day record at the box office during a, a time when many people are still hesitant to be back in a cramped movie theater. Uh, interesting action. Disney up to about 185 with the market. We got a positive market all across the board. Bitcoin, one of the only things in the red this morning. We got gold down about a dollar, inching back towards the green. And we got S&Ps up 29 points. We got 15 minutes to go until the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back, going over what else we have happening this week, this day. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up 29, the NASDAQ 100 up 95, all the markets green across the board right now. Jumping over to what else we have going on. So we get CPI data out uh, tomorrow. Let's make sure we got it. Yes, yeah, so U.S. Consumer Price Index out tomorrow. We get an Apple product launch event going on tomorrow as well. Quadruple witching going on this Friday in the markets in terms of expiration. Uh, jumping back to, so the Apple case, um, I believe I had it and it was mentioned up here. But in terms of Apple and Epic, uh, Epic is going to be appealing this. The CEO of Epic, um, is that it? Epic Games, coming out and saying, I'll have to find it, or it's even, maybe it's private, uh, that it's not a win for consumers or developers. Uh, Apple trading lower because immediately they're going to have to pay back Epic, 30% of what it owed them over that time, which is a substantial amount of money. Uh, also going to allow payments out of the app in terms of the iPhone store, but not really a win for consumers, even though it was labeled that because they were fighting against uh, monopolistic tendencies was the phrase out there. Apple, you're talking about a company with 16.5 billion shares, outstanding. Uh, I was joking with some friends by noon that nice little morning for Apple wiping off about a hundred billion dollars in market cap by noon Eastern time. Nonetheless, Apple gonna open about a half a point higher this morning. And we've had it happen each of the last three days that we get the market higher into the open. As we talked about Wednesday, we came in, I guess, relatively flat sold off Thursday, you popped into the open, sold off. Friday, you really got an acceleration into higher prices, almost up to the highs that we had on Thursday as well, sold off. And today, we're kind of right back up to those lower levels of Friday's action. We'll see where we go from there. In terms of what we have going on in individual equities, Coinbase, they're going to be raising $1.5 in a bond sale. I would be pushing out Boku bonds, uh, managing a company at the interest rates that we currently have. Uh, looking to raise $1.5 in a debut bond offering. Goldman Sachs managing the sale from its high-yield syndicate task may price the deal as soon as Tuesday. The bonds will mature in seven to ten years with a call and a call with investors scheduled for Monday, New York. Capital raise will bolster the company's balance sheet. Proceeds earmarked for general corporate expenses, not bad, which may include continued investments in product development, potential investments in or acquisitions of other companies, products, technologies. They basically can do whatever they like. Uh, let's see. 
So they got about $4.4 billion in cash and cash equivalents and about $1.5 billion in non-current liabilities. The company is facing increasing competitive pressure from a slew of new and upcoming entrants, FTX.US. Uh, is that the one that Brady's out there pumping? It might be. Uh, bullish due to the launch of this year is expected to be bankrolled with a $10 billion in funding. Not bad. Uh, yeah, $10 billion in funding. And we jumped to Coinbase this morning. Trading a little bit lower from 2848 to 246. I think they're right at the, the reference price, right? Wasn't it 250 or something like that? Maybe 240. Um, at a time when Bitcoin has been relatively strong, back to you know 45 to 50,000, the run we just had, that's quite a rebound from the lows we were chopping around between May and July. Ethereum, even stronger than Bitcoin. They've had some sell offs when Bitcoin does, but you're talking about Ethereum trading at 3225 relatively holding up well in coinbase though not able to get the acceleration that they had in terms of right out of the gate people thinking it was definitely going to trade above that 250 price point not quite the case now i mean you're talking about a company valued at 52 billion dollars it's almost hard to understand the value of a billion dollars uh so of course that's quite a price tag still at 248 nonetheless all right jumping around american airlines right airlines debt pile look at this graph folks Sky high debt, global airlines debt pile grew to 340 billion as pandemic persists. When you talk about loans are in the black, bonds are in the pink. Uh, we have quite an acceleration going on there and the spread of the Delta variant may lead to other countries imposing tougher quarantine rules. Quarantine rules. Uh, they, the industry's outstanding debt has jumped 23% since 2020 to 340 billion. So far this year, global air carriers have sold $63 billion in bonds and loans. Boy, travel better pick up, right? That's quite a price tag on some of these. EasyJet raised $400 million. Um, here's some examples. On the funds provided by nonetheless, Japan Airlines, $300 billion yen or $2.7 billion U.S. fresh funding. Yeah, it's just all across the board. So I'd be very careful with these airlines. In the U.S., the U.S. saw hefty sales following Labor Day holidays last week that chalked up $76 billion in issuance. The high-yield pipeline includes deals for, let's see, Unifrax, not familiar, $1.2 billion in bonds to back its acquisition of Lidol and Solanus. Lots of action going on in terms of the markets, in terms of the debt, in terms of airlines jumping around two airlines. Now, these... Uh, yeah, quite the sell-off. Look at the volatility here from Thursday to Friday's action. We look at a 15-minute, right? You, you accelerate to 2061. You give it all back on Friday. We're down to 1920 again. Delta Airlines, pretty similar deal. 4175, 3977. Boeing has really been lagging. We're at 211 right now. You take a look at Boeing. That was lining up pretty nicely in terms of potentially bumping up near the bottom portion of that trend line. But man, what I'd be a little bit worried about now is that you come off where we were in March, you touch that level in October, you accelerate higher, you trade to the lower trend line, and now we've actually dipped below that. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. And we've bounced up to that channel line potentially from 210 to 216. Not a small bounce. Uh, and that could be the, the path to actually lower prices. Remarkable if that's the case for a company like Boeing when you're sitting at 446 in the beginning of 2019. We're more than cut in half. Um, but Boeing, I'm not sure Boeing's the deal. If I was going to be in the airlines, I would probably be getting new, into a company like Delta. Um, is one way that you can make that trade. The cruises are going to be a time as well. I know I'm just stating it. But you may have a long time with these in terms of a year or two as things persist, unfortunately. You know, you got Carnival will be back to $50 eventually. But you can see how quickly you can shave off a third of your investment when you trade from $31.52 on June 7th. And by the middle of July, you're trading at $19. You lose $14 of $32. You're talking about, you know, 35, 40% haircut. And there's no reason why this can't be back down to 15, 16 bucks if cruise lines have a problem getting some demand after all this. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. I talked about OPEC. Let's see what other stories I got here. Well, let's take a look at some of the stocks that I like to take a look at as well. We talked about Disney, 184. You're up to 185 right now. Uber is one I've talked about as well. Now, Uber's up about 40 cents. Uber's pulled back to the 382. 1371 was the low, 6405. Uh, that would be an area you definitely want to hold at, 3868. It's also nice that you're bumping up here. Um, you pull back to the 618. 
that's definitely an area that has support here. And I can't imagine, you know, you're talking about, you jump over and you're talking about a company valued at $75 billion. Um, they will be around, they will be profitable. You know, I don't see that company dropping below 50, 60 billion, unless the, the unfortunately, COVID takes a turn for the worse because travel is gonna pick up in a big way. Business travel might be gone, but that's the same with the airlines in terms of uh, possibly getting back. Now, that's why I bring up the debt though, because no matter how much money you're making, if you got debt loads approaching half a billion dollars, um, that's gonna weigh on those airlines no matter what happens. All right, folks, we got markets coming into the basically session, pre-market session highs for the open. S&P's up 32 points, NASDAQ 100 up 102, Dow up 252. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading market and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets right near where near where we started a uh, little bit of a pop right on the open still you get the nasdaq 100 up 95 points the s p is up 32 points dow up 262 and the russell up 16 points right now jumping over to the biggest company in the world talking about uh, apple apple right now trading up almost a full percent you're up a dollar 40 as i mentioned 16.5 billion dollars uh shares outstanding Apple adding like $20 billion in market capitalization just off that soft opening to 150.49. Now getting into Apple, 
So Tuesday, uh, they're going to have new iPhones, Apple Watch, and AirPods on Tuesday. I wonder how they're going to upgrade all these. At some point, the updates become somewhat marginal. I liked getting my upgrade for the iPhone 12. Uh, it provides 5G, so I should be good for a while. I know some of my friends really love all the Apple products, right? They'll upgrade it initially right away as soon as they can and sell their other phone or whatever. Uh, AirPods, not sure where we'll go from there, but nonetheless, they're going to hold uh, its annual iPhone launch event on Tuesday. Exclusively produced fall launches are a signature quirk of the company going back over a decade. And uh, yeah, so they're going to have a few products out there. Last year, due to COVID, Apple revealed its new watches in September, then followed that event in October with the iPhone 12 event. And uh, all of Apple's product segments have been on a tear this year. People continue to work from home. How about iPhone revenue up 49.78%? Uh, and let's see, the company is expected to introduce new iPhones and update its AirPods and Apple Watch. And I will say, I am a little bit of an Apple fan. As Apple continues to pop, now you're up 1.5% as this market is rocking higher to start Monday trading. Uh, the Apple Watch, now, I am an Apple fan, as I say, biased as it comes. Uh, but the Apple Watch has actually been something I've really enjoyed in terms of being able to track whether it's steps, your health, your heart rate. I think it has an EKG in there. Um, you can do breathing exercises. And if you pay the cellular, you can actually use it away from your phone, which I thought was the coolest thing. If you're active at all, if you want to take more walks, if you want to be able to text or call while you're taking those walks, you don't want to have your phone on you, uh, use the iPhone. So there's my Apple ad for the day. But I do enjoy that uh, um, iWatch. I do. And it's been a cool factor trying to work out, keep your uh, heart rate, all that stuff. It is pretty cool. Okay, let's jump around to some of the other FANG stocks as Apple markets higher. You got Microsoft popping higher, up about 9 tenths percent. Google really traded back with Apple on Friday. And look at that, up 1.3% because they'll be dealing with the Play Store. They're dealing with singular, similar legal problems, I believe with Epic as well, having to do with their monopoly of the game store. I imagine things might be leading to an indication that would happen the same way. But what you have to realize is this would have been a monumental defeat actually for Apple if they were deemed a monopoly and were not able to charge 30% of all transactions within their app store as having monopolistic tendencies. And so that's the big win here. And in the long run, that's probably much more important than uh, allowing companies to divert customers away from the app store. Because, you know, I saw people joking online. I mean, just the frustration level when you, you know, if you got to pull your credit card out online, you're like, ah, come on. I mean, maybe you have your digits saved in a online, whatever it is. It's very cumbersome is the point to make that transaction. Um, so a huge difference from people who are actually willing to go into an app, then log from the app to the website, to the website, to the payment portal, as opposed to just hitting the pay for button within the Apple store and you're automatically built. Um, unfortunately, people are very lazy. They don't like to do those types of things. And it can be a huge difference in whether you succeed or not in terms of that transition. Uh, but Apple up 1.3% today. Let's check in on Amazon, up about 8 tenths percent right now. We'll check in on Facebook. Facebook pulling back from there. High opening, still up about 2 tenths percent. Snapchat up about 3 tenths. We'll check in on some of my favorites. Disney up about half a percent on the heels of their movie Shang-Chi, doing pretty well as well, but they're gonna be offering, now it's interesting, uh, HBO, right? AT&T, Time Warner, now they've spun off, I believe, HBO. AT&T up 9 tenths percent, let's see Verizon, how they're trading, up about a half percent with the market today. Um, but HBO, I watched, I think it was Malignant uh, last night, which is one of those movies that I think is in theaters and they just released to HBO Max. It's one of the reasons why I signed up for HBO Max for the year, because they're releasing all those films directly to the subscriber base. I'm not sure I'll say on HBO once those go back. Now, I'm also a Disney subscriber and I subscribe to Disney because you got kids in the house. And if you got kids in the house and you got Disney and it's pretty cheap, all things considered, in terms of Disney, even though they're going to start raising those prices, um, that's just something to look about. Now, Netflix, I would say the same thing versus Disney. Now, Netflix, giving back some of the gains that it's had recently, you've still had quite an acceleration. You're up to 594. Uh, putting this on a daily, I mean, 594 would be a record high all but last week, I think. 
Yeah, 594. What was our high going back to January? 593.29. So we're basically right where we were in terms of the highs of January before we had the pullback. Uh, Netflix does have a strong slate of content coming up. And if you're using Netflix in any way, if you got kids in the house and everybody's using it, that's probably one you're not going to be canceling as well. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to binging on maybe some some Seinfeld. Haven't seen it in a while. Love that show. Why not? And uh, I do like some of the other content that they put out as well. So it'll be interesting to see how these streaming wars play out as things go forward. All right, we get a little bit of a pullback from where we were on the open. I only bring it up because not quite what you'd want. I mean, it makes sense you'd have a little give back after that acceleration. But if you look where we were in terms of the open yesterday, we did pop in a pretty similar fashion. And within the span of about 45 minutes by 10, that's the 10 o'clock bar. So, yeah, 45 minutes by 10.15 in the S&Ps, you would drop from 45.09 about 30 points so we'll see where we go let's see how the vix is trading at this morning as well vix trading at about 1917 we take a look at crude now i'm going to go over some crude numbers here because this is some pretty strong numbers from the article we were talking about in terms of opec crude straight up 90 cents he's up crude is up 1.3 percent and taking a look at the numbers uh the world's appetite for opec crude was revised up this is the OPEC seeing stronger demand that we talked about and referenced earlier in the show. World's appetite for OPEC crude was revised up by, now this is for OPEC crude, okay? 260,000 barrels a day for the year compared to just last month's estimate, largely due to supply disruptions outside of the group. North America output was curbed by Hurricane Ida and a fire at an offshore platform in Mexico. You have a lot of factors going in. Now, the demand side of things for OPEC crude was revised higher by 1.12 million barrels a day for 2022. That's going out the next year. Global consumption is expected to increase by 4.2 million barrels a day next year to 100 plus million barrels a day. That's a million barrels a day higher than last month's estimate. So those are the demand numbers, all right? OPEC crude the appetite for OPEC crude revised up by 260,000. Now, the production side was is only rising by 150,000 barrels a day to 26.76 barrels a day in August, See, significantly below the average global demand for OPEC crude. It doesn't, you know, the equation points to higher prices is the point I'm getting to as I walk these through. That leaves plenty of space for the organization and its allies to gradually revive 400,000 barrels a day of idle production each month in line with their agreement. Um, still, the cartel's data show that it isn't just non-OPEC nations experiencing production problems. Despite being permitted to increase production in August, several African members showed little growth, or in case Nigeria, saw a drop in production. Oil going higher, $70.74. We get the market pulling back a little bit on the open. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Wow, that was a short-lived run to higher prices. The Russell making it to negative prices just like that. We give back 20 points in the Russell. That's almost a full percent. We're trading at 22.22. You're flat right now in the Russell. NASDAQ 100. I mean, look at this drop. We just dropped from a price point of 15,557. You're down 100 points just like that, blowing through the 618 of the full run we had from higher prices overnight. s and is hanging on to 15 points of gains right now. I talked about in terms of the drop we had on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I mean, look at this run, NASDAQ 100, right? Wednesday, sell off on the open. Thursday, sell off on the open, sell off intraday. Friday, sell off on the open, sell off intraday. We get the biggest bar yet to kick off Monday trading. We got quad witching coming up on Friday. We have a Fed meeting next week. We got CPI data tomorrow, and we have the VIX right now trading at a price point of 20 on the dot. I imagine we hit 21.13 as this market continues to drop, folks. It is not finding a bit remarkable. I did not. What would be the probability uh, at 9.30 that we'd be read across the board by 9.45? You would have needed a lot of action, a lot of odds, right? Think about that. What price would you have needed to be given for all of the markets to potentially be in the red by 945, now we get the Dow up 191. Dow the strongest index right now for sure. Up more than half a percent. S&P's up a third of a percent. Russell in the red and the NASDAQ barely hanging on to the gains. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon shares trading still positive by about two tenths. Amazon's held up really well. Folks, retirement wise, you wanna get into Amazon, you could always buy a partial position right now. And um, you know there are brokerages out there that do offer slivers of shares. If you don't want to get in a full one, 3,500, I understand. Uh, but Amazon, just such a strong company to just have their hands in almost so many cookie jars, the growth they have. We're pushing up against the upper boundary line here. So a little tough to get into it when you're doing that. You know, you've faced resistance on a couple occasions. But if you're buying this for retirement for a long period of time, um, this could be on the way to its next leg up. It really could. Let's jump to Microsoft shares. Interesting that we get this dramatic pullback and we still have the big dogs in positive territory. You know, you got, did get a pullback, but nothing so crazy for the 100 point drop you got in the NASDAQ 100. We got Microsoft up three tenths percent, Apple shares up eight tenths percent right now. They're still putting a good amount into the SP and the NASDAQ when you look at it. Google shares right now up two thirds percent. Uh, Facebook shares, look at that drop off by about five bucks trading at. 377. Let's jump to Tesla shares down 2.1%. That's quite a drop for Tesla hitting the market. And we are, folks, we're going to get red right now. We're going to get it in the NASDAQ at least. And we got it in the Russell NASDAQ clinging on to those gains. Not what you want to see, folks, coming in after you saw Wednesday, Thursday, Friday action, intraday sell offs across the board. Uh, and we're 15 minutes in the trading week. As I mentioned, quad witching, CPI data out tomorrow. Jumping over to a little analysis of the CPI data. The headline, as CNBC puts it, bracing for a hot consumer inflation report the week ahead. 
So we get this number out tomorrow. Um, we get if the CPI is hotter than expected, it could make the difference between a September announcement for tapering or waiting to November. I mean, the real worry here is that you're not making up the jobs and you have inflation, right? That's going to cause the Fed to be a little bit nervous of the stimulus they're providing. It would be unfortunate for everybody if the Fed needs to pull the stimulus they're providing, not because the jobs and the economy are back where they want them, but because inflationary tendencies are going to force their hand. That's something that's in play. Economists expect CPI to raise 0.4% month over month. It's a pretty hot number, month over month. There's 12 months, folks. You rise 0.4% every month, right? What are you pushing? You're pushing 4.8% almost for the year. Uh, August producer price index, which was released Friday, a jump of 8.3% year over year, due in part to supply chain constraints. Consumer price index percentage change from a year ago. All items in the U.S. city average. You see where we're talking about July, 5.4%. Yeah, they talk about the jobs number in here as well, uh, but that'll be interesting. So the market looking for about a 0.4% number. That's out tomorrow. The market a little bit skittish ahead of that number coming out in a big way. We got gold flat right now at 17.92. Crude holding pretty steady at 70.69. Notes and bonds, let's see where we're going. A little bit of a pullback in yield. Nothing too crazy for the moves we're getting. It's really interesting how you have kind of some real tame action in the 10-year considering the runs that we've had in some of the markets, right? We get the VIX spike in a 21. We got the NASDAQ barely positive by seven points now. Uh, you get the 10-year yield ticking down just one basis point to 1.32%, the yield on the 10-year. And we have the 30-year falling slightly as well to kick things off. We got the 30-year right now, price-wise, trading up 12 ticks, 163.03. Let's jump over to the VIX as we talk about 1994 on that volatility index. We reached a high of 21.13 on Friday. All right, let's see where else we want to go. What else I had up here? Yeah, Robin Hood. Uh, so my dad was out here talking last week as well, saying there's no way that uh, those in charge of Wall Street will allow payment for order flow to be banned. And uh, Robin Hood's chief legal officer says the same thing. The SEC is going to arrive at the conclusion that payment for order flow is undoubtedly an amazingly good thing for retail investors, and they're not going to ban it, said the Robin Hood chief legal officer. Um, that is Dan Gallagher told CNBC that if he still worked for the SEC, he would be investigating the people and institutions that he claims lied surrounding the GameStop short squeeze. Well, it's lovely to see the PR teams out there. Uh, there's arguments to be made, folks, in terms of liquidity and that liquidity serving investors. That is the argument. You know, that level of liquidity is good for retail investors. Um, there's a level of truth to that. I believe it gets stretched, though, and that's the key part, right? How do you make sure that it's not getting stretched to the point but for payment or for order flow um, is hurting investors? And I it seems like allowing free access to trading and then allowing people to buy and sell those bids and offers and 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 split the market and make almost automatic arbitrage profits goes slightly against the interest of a completely free market of bids and asks. But that doesn't mean it's that simple. And you're going to see that play out in the future, though. You will. Um, but not surprising that Robin Hood's chief legal officer is out there saying, hey, our entire business plan is legal because if that gets banned this company's in big problems uh down 1.1 percent now paypal was coming out they they already do crypto paypal down about a percent this morning uh they already do crypto and they're going to potentially do brokerage services as well i mean Robinhood, when you're just so invested in dogecoin trading i would be very very careful of this equity it doesn't mean that they might turn the corner and use this acceleration to grow that company. But you're talking about a company now, Robinhood, valued at $35 billion, and they basically make all their money off of crypto trading, and in crypto trading, they make it all off Dogecoin. That's quite a valuation, $45 billion, uh, and they're in competitive space. You know, fintech, in terms of online brokerages for, for free, let alone you have companies like our sponsor, TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim, but they have an outstanding platform. You know, they're, they're super competitive. In that same regard, very tough in terms of how when you're making all your money off Dogecoin um, and you're potentially exposed to if the industry ever somewhat, even if they limited, right, payment for order flow, they'd be particularly exposed in a big way at Robinhood. All right, market's catching a little bit of a bid now, 20 minutes into the trading week. I say a little bit of a bid. Look at that. 
barely a pop on those markets back to the 618 line that we had from the full move higher this morning. We got all the markets back in the flat or in the green. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets in positive territory. S&P's up 23. NASDAQ 100 up 25. The Dow up 300 points. Now you get the Dow right near the session highs and the Russell back in the green by five points. All the markets catching a little bit of a bid. We'll jump over to MGM. So it was interesting. Football Sunday kicking things off. Quite a weekend of football. Patriots, unfortunate game last night. Fumble right at the end of the game. They were coming down. Could have kicked a field goal, taken the lead. Uh, they fumble it with about just over two minutes left. End up losing the game by a point. Uh, nonetheless, it was cool to see uh, the sports betting ads, right, and how prevalent they were. MGM had a good ad out there, I think, with Jamie Foxx. Uh, a couple of other ads out there as well. We're all used to the Daily Fantasy ads, of course, being out there. It's interesting how ESPN – now, again, ESPN's part of Disney. we got Disney Man in my newsletter. I am biased again. Uh, but interesting how – and it makes sense. They've just – a full adoption of betting in terms of – they have fantasy now. I think they even have a show on ESPN – that literally has the the like betting hour now or gambling now. But, I mean, it's completely legal in states like that. And they are pushing programming, rightfully so, uh, to cater to people, whether it's, you know, talking about over-unders, lines, 
wins losses daily fantasy certain players their their attractive nature or or to dodge players um but it's a brave new world and we got a fight in florida going on right now where we did pass a constitu constitutional amendment that I had thought even said no, basically that there could be no more expansion of gambling in the state of Florida unless voted on by the citizens of Florida, um, which basically meant, and the unfortunate part about this is it was bankrolled by the Seminole tribe and Disney because Disney doesn't want more gambling in Florida and the Seminole tribe loves having a monopoly. So they bankrolled this whole thing to make sure that it can't happen. And it's unfortunate because in certain cities you could have a casino, which can do a lot. And I understand that, you know, locals spending money and, and, and all that in terms of spending retirement. Um, but nonetheless, they're trying to push it, even though citizens voted that, yes, they want to be able to vote on gambling. They got it done. But now sports betting, they're coming for it. So it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to have an interesting day in the market. Stay tuned. We got Basil Chapman up next. Live programming all day at TFNN. Have a great Monday, everybody. Building wealth trading.